wondered how you go from terrified to taking action, you are in the right place because that is exactly what we are talking about today. I can taste you, 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 you. have all been there where you're on the precipice of a big change or a little change, mega, minor, whatever. There's this space between where you are and where you want to go and what you want to be. Like I said, it can be big or it can be small. It could be like, I want to quit my job or I want to travel or move house or maybe I just want to like start getting up earlier in the morning or like whatever it is. It's a discrepancy between where you are and where you want to be. In order to get from A to B or like A to Z, it more feels like because that gap feels gigantic. In order to do that, you have to be brave as fuck. You need to get your shit together and support yourself so that you start taking action and doing the things that are going to move you from there to there. And it is even more terrifying the more you want that thing. The more important that that change is to you and that thing that you're striving for, the fear, it's gonna like, it's gonna get louder and louder and louder. Does that mean we sit and we hide under the bed or we're like, la la la, not listening? No, because the longer you do that, the longer you're going to continue to live in a space that is not fulfilling, not inspiring. So what we're talking about today is what do you do when you feel terrified and you don't know how to move yourself forward? How do you become brave when you feel like anything but brave? And today we're talking about a concept that I like to call borrowing brave. In this episode, we're gonna talk about what you can do, tangible strategies, and things you can put into place, action points, things you can actually do right now to help you borrow your bravery and start to feel like a little bit more like you're ready to take action and do that thing that's terrifying. So we're gonna jump into a podcast episode that I recorded earlier this year. Have a listen and I'll be back at the end to talk more. You can do all sorts of things. You can do all of the things to support yourself along the decision-making process, right? Whatever thing it is that you're trying to bring change or breathe change into in your life, you can do all of the research, the planning, you know, data collection, you can ask people their opinion, you can ask people about their experiences, looking, you know, looking for tales of like, whoa, like, ooh, scary, or like, whoa, amazing. But eventually you're going to have to stop. Like you're going to have to stop that preparatory process and actually do the thing. You're going to have to make a move and take action and do what it is that needs to be done to move you into the next phase of your life, your being, right? Like I said, big or small, maybe it's like quitting your job. Maybe it's just showing up on social media and talking to the camera that day. Maybe it's committing to hiring somebody so that you can grow your team. Um, maybe it's like deciding to, you know, bid adieu and au revoir to an old hobby or a passion project that's just not lifting you up anymore. You have to act. You have to do something to stop or start or expand something in your life. And that takes bravery. But what if you don't feel brave, right? Like what if you're like, okay, I need this bravery to help me through this. And when you go in, you know, within, there is no bravery. And what if you feel even worse, the complete opposite of brave? Like what if you feel tiny and trembling and unsure, anxious, agitated, all those things? How will you ever find the bravery that you need to do these things that you want to do? Like to leave that partner, to take that new job, to chase that new idea, to follow your curiosity, your dreams, your energy. How do you find the bravery to do that when you feel the complete opposite inside or just emptiness, tumbleweeds? There's nothing there within for you to draw upon to lift yourself up and move yourself forward. And my answer to that is you don't wait for bravery to show up. Never. You never sit and go, okay, I'm going to wait till I feel brave enough to do this and then I'm going to do it. You borrow it. And that's why we've called this episode Borrowing Brave, because we're going to talk about how you borrow brave from people, places, things. It's totally possible. And it is the only way you're going to give yourself that sense of bravery that you need to make that step 
in my own life, I've made a lot of big choices, big moves. Um, I've made terrifying, life-altering decisions in the last 39 years. And every single one of them, I was never ready. I never felt brave. I never felt like it was the right time. I knew it was the right thing to do, but I was always terrified. And the way I supported myself to take action was to find bravery in other places and borrow it, make it my own to make myself feel safe and move forward. When I decided to become a mom as a single woman, I was like bloody terrified. You do not grow up being told stories of like needing to ever make a decision like this. There's no Disney movie that's like, you know, this is what's going to happen when you're 39. You're told that you're going to grow up, meet a nice man, get married, get that dog, have kids, and that's it. Like that's your conveyor belt of life that is fed to you from day one. Um, and I, I had relationships. I had adventures. I had lived and done things, but I just hadn't found that person that I was supposed to be with. And the timing was not lining up, right? And I was in this space where I had to decide, do I let go of the idea of having kids in a family? Or do I take a step into something that was like totally foreign to me, a world that I had no frame of reference for, no map, no models, no ideas how you make it work. I was raised by a single mom. I knew that being a single parent could be done and I knew that it was possible. Like it was possible to have a happy, successful life in a single parent household. It wasn't like that I was building, I needed to build this belief from ground zero, right? Like I already had this idea that logistically it was possible. I had models in my own life of how women could raise a family successfully and how children could turn out happy and all right. But that is a completely different story than the one of deciding to do it on your own from the get-go. And there were so many things that contributed to my fear of making that move and deciding to become a single mother. Finances was a huge fear right? Stability, stamina, like how the hell I was going to be able to support myself and a child without another income, without a contributing partner financially, without spousal support or whatever. There was no child, there is no child support when you do, when you're on your own, right? Like there's no other partner. And I was like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to manage childcare when there's holidays, summers, after school? Like, how am I going to do all of this? medical expenses. What if the kid needed braces? Like this, everything was going to be on me. Like what about retiring? Shit gets expensive, <laughs> right? Um, even the thoughts of like, what if I got sick and I couldn't work? I'm sick right now. <laughs> I'm not at work. I'm, well, I'm at work, but a totally different work. And we'll get to that throughout the story. But I remember thinking like, what do I do if I have a, I need a sick day? Like, and I can't work. Like what happens? What if I'm sick long-term and I can't work? Um, and all of this was going on in my mind, like on this endless loop. Oh my God, what if this? Terrible things, terrible. This could happen, that could happen. Um, but it was happening at the exact same time that I was also battling internally with who I was in terms of my career. I had a job, like I had a good job, a traditional go to school, get a skill, get your certificate, and then go home and you know, go out and bring home the bacon kind of job. I had that steady paycheck with the promise of a six figure salary when I hit the top of the pay grid. And I would stay at that six figure salary every single year until I chose to retire. I had a work day that ended before 3 p.m. I had no work to take home with me at the end of the day. I had every school holiday off with pay. I had a huge benefits package. I had a massive pension. I had safety. I had security. I had stability. I had those things that helped with the fears of the instability, the finances, the unknown. I had those things in this job. But this was also a job of stagnation, suffocation, lack of motivation, disengagement, trauma responses and fear, anxiety, a lost sense of self and who I was, no identity, a lack of autonomy and personal power, and to wrap it all up in a shitty bow, no sense of purpose. <laughs> it was not my purpose where I was, but it served a purpose. And I used that experience to borrow my bravery. It gave me what I needed. It gave me, like I said, the stability, the security, the repetition. It gave me that forever and ever that I needed with no end in sight. I needed that concept of this is what will happen forever and ever until you choose to leave. I needed that in order to feel brave enough to wrap my head around this idea of having a child on my own. And so I did. 
I had my child. I like was like, I'm going to have a kid. I can do it because I've got all of these things taken care of. I've got, you know, I'm scared about this, but I'm going to feel brave because I know I have this supporting me. I knew it wasn't supporting me in other ways, but it was what I needed to be able to feel confident enough and brave enough to take that step into the unknown that was so terrifying. And so I had my child and I had my year off. I took my maternity leave and I went back to work ready to start back into this life that I hadn't really chosen, but I had chosen. And it did not go well. (laughs) It did not go well. When I was on maternity leave, I actually had lost my job and I got reassigned to a new location, a new school. Um, It was the same shitty conditions and lack of autonomy, but with a pandemic thrown into the mix now. And I was missing my tight-knit family of um, colleagues, my, my friends, my school friends to support me. So there was no more of that ride or die friendship to have lunch with. It was just this tumbleweeds into the abyss of disconnection and aloneness, disengagement and disinterest under this like, this is your life lens. Like literally I could hear a voice in my head being like, this is the life you chose. And that shit got old quick, like really old. And there's a book that I've talked about in the last episode, um, The Renaissance Soul by Margaret Lobenstein. And it made me think of a quote from that book where she says, people who aren't fully committed to their values that the activities they do represent sputter through life. They're pulled in one direction by their commitments and in another by their spirits. And by the time this school year ended, like 10 months later, my body was in one place, my mind was in another, and my spirit was almost fucking shattered. And I knew, like I knew in my gut, inside of me, what I had to do. I knew how I wanted to live. I knew how I wanted to act. I knew how I wanted to feel on a daily basis. I knew what my skill set was, what I loved doing, and the way I wanted to impact the world. And I knew I needed this. I knew I needed to step into this and be this beyond a need for myself, but for my son and for my life and the life that we were creating together, for the people that we loved and the people that we were with. And the people that we were going to show up for, I knew what I needed to do, you know, to quote um, the song by Florence and the Machine, you know, run fast for your mother, run fast for your father, run for your children and your sisters and your brothers, like run, 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 run. Um, I knew like the dog days, as Florence Welsh speaks of, the dog days had to be over. Like I knew it, but I also knew that I was fucking terrified again. A side note, that song um, by Florence and the machine dog days are over. I had been through another life turning point in my life. I was rollerblading through a park in London in a shit fest of like an emotionally dysfunctional relationship. And this song popped on and I immediately had like a click in my head, like snap and in my gut. And I was like, I have to get the fuck out of here. Um, I did not have the bravery in me to make that move for like almost a year later, but I did eventually. Um, it's interesting. I bring that up because I don't know if you're like me. I find sometimes when you're at a moment in your life, a song comes on and you hear the lyrics and you're like, oh, damn. Oh, damn. So you think of when we're thinking of borrowing brave, think of that song. Think of the dog days are over, right? And she's saying, run, run, run. You need to run. The days will be over. Happiness is going to hit you, right? Like a bullet in the back, as she says. But how do you like, let's talk about like, how do you actually borrow brave? Yes, I borrowed brave from the shitty job that I hated. I looked within it and I said, okay, like what circumstances exist in here that I need to hold on to and have within, you know, arm's reach so that I can feel brave enough. I looked within my external circumstances. What else can you do to support you and help you borrow brave as you're wayfinding your way through life? And wayfinding, remember, is that concept of a default or a bias to take action where you have a curiosity or you have an inkling of feeling and you're like, ooh, I think this is what needs to happen. I'm going to research options and I'm going to dive in and take action very quickly so that I can get some feedback. It's a bias towards action quickly. Wayfinding does not mean sitting on your ass being like, hmm, it would be nice if I could do this. Or maybe it would be nice if this could happen. Wayfinding is getting an idea, a spark, a feeling, and then being like, fuck it, I'm all in, let's go. And taking action before you're ready to see what happens and then get that feedback, yes or no, and then pivot. But you need to be brave. You need to have bravery and that fire within you to support yourself to do that. There's a podcast that I love 
by Lacey Phillips. It's called um, expanded by to be magnetic. And Lacey Phillips uses this term called expanders. She's actually trademarked it. Like if you're in her pathway program, you'll see she has a little TM beside the word expanders. So I will say this is not my term expanders. This is hers. And she uses the term expanders to mean the concept of seeing to believe. Uh, If you don't really know her well uh, or her work, like I said, she's got the podcast, she's got this pathway membership, but she's a creator of a process that she calls um, neural manifestation, right? Which is the process of like rewiring subconscious beliefs and whatnot and hacking your brain so that you can manifest the things that you want to happen. I fucking love her. Like it's, I highly recommend her podcast. Go listen to it. I'll put it in the show notes where you can find it. But anyway, so she talks about in this concept of neural manifestation, she talks about finding people that are expanders. They can be in in real life, like RRL people that you know, or they can be virtual people that you've never met, but you hang out with on Instagram, or they could be people that you see in the media, like on a Netflix show. But they're people that represent something or someone or some energy or aspect of something you want to call into your life. Because her belief is that you need to see what you want in existence in order to like expand your mind so that you can believe that it's possible for you. So my take on that is that her concept of expanders, that these these expanders that exist, they are out there for you to borrow bravery from. You can look at their success and it can fill your bravery bucket just that much to be like, Ooh, if I, you know, if I take a step towards this, this is what might happen. You use their success and their experiences as data and proof for you to pave the way forward, right? Wayfinding is all about taking action, seeing what happens and then interpreting the results and making another move. But by using an expander, You can use their results, their data to become feedback for you in terms of positive feedback and to see like, oh, this could actually work. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. This person's done X, Y, Z. I want to do X, Y, Z. I feel a little bit, a little less scared to do it. You can look at it and see like, this person's done X, Y, Z. I want to do X, Y, Z. I feel a little bit less scared to take that move and make it happen. Now, like how do you find the right expander, right? A little caveat that I'll add is I think it's important um, to make sure you pick an expander if you're looking to borrow bravery that you select this expander appropriately. I don't recommend comparing apples to oranges. Like we need to be comparing apples to apples here. If you are someone who is multi-passionate, right? Like you have a lot of facets of your business that you're interested in. Don't compare yourself to a zone of genius person who's doing one thing because you need to find proof of someone who's like as close to you as you can possibly find so that their success registers in your brain is like, this could possibly be my success. You can borrow their success. You can share the experience. I have an expanders board that I'm looking at right now. It's like a mashup of a vision board. It's got stuff that I'm working on in my life, but I have three expanders in the corner. I have their picture. Like I printed out their photo. I found them on Google and I was like, actually there's four. I'm looking at them four, five. I got five expanders on here for different aspects of my life, business, things that I want to call in. And it's there to remind me every single day they made it work. They made it happen. So on those days where like the inner shit talk is going or the inner bitch, it's like, you're never going to be able to do this. This is not going to work. When that starts to fire up, I'm staring at these people's faces and I'm like, no, it does work. It's right there. I feel a little brave. I can say like, fuck it. I'm just going to do it. So yes, Get your expanders, make an expansion board, you know, a mashup of your visions, your values, people that have expanded your mind, your bravery board, have it in a space where you can look at it all the time um, and be really specific and ruthless, be ruthless in looking for proof of what it is that you want to happen. The other thing you can do is instead of finding bravery in external other people, find bravery in your own circumstances. So look at your life, look at your job, look at where you are right now, even if it's like sucking the fucking life out of you and you're just like, I fucking hate this. Get me out of here. Look at it from a different lens and be like, what is the gold in this scenario? So if you're in a nine to five that you hate and you're like, I have got to get out of here before it kills me. What is the gold in your nine to five that you can grab onto, you can hold onto to help you build your bravery to take that next step forward? 
doesn't matter if like, it's not going to work for you long term. The point is like, what is it right now that you need? Are you needing some tech skills? You feel like you need to learn something. You need some sort of skill development before you're ready to leave. Or do you need like networking opportunities? Are you like, I need to be building my audience. I need to be building this or whatever. I want to feel, I'll feel more safe when blah, blah, blah. Right. What are you doing right now that has value for you in terms of building those bravery connections? So like, yes, maybe you're working in a shop and you hate it and you're like, this sucks, but you're also working on, you're writing an ebook or something and you're going to sell it. And the shop that you work in is a great opportunity to talk to people on a daily basis, get their email and be like, Hey, when my book launches, I'll let you know. So fine. That's the gold. It's going to help you feel brave because you're going to be building your community while you're in this job that you don't like. Right. Another one is like, maybe you're working you're doing graphic design at a company. You're like, I fucking hate this. I hate them. My boss is the devil. I'm editing really boring pieces of text and graphics or whatever, but you're learning a software system. You're learning how to use really complex systems that you're going to need to know how to do when you go out on your own and launch your own business. Right? So then you're not going to feel as scared. You're going to think and feel like you have the technical skills, knowledge, and experience to feel more confident when you do take that leap. So look at what you're doing right now and think like, how can I find value in what I'm doing right now that's going to help me in the future? How is what I'm doing right now building skills, conditions, circumstances, anything that you can file away in your bravery bucket? I just coined that term during this episode, bravery bucket. We're going to make it a thing. How can you fill your bravery bucket with where you are right now? Build your brave by collecting people, experiences, and things that you know you're going to need to tap into whenever you decide to launch into that next phase of your life. Go back to Florence and the machine. Dog days are over. What does she say? She says, happiness hit me like a bullet in the back. That's where you want to move from. You want to move from that feeling of like, run fast, run fast, run fast to being like, boom, joygasm. Everything is amazing. And I guarantee you it is. Everything will be amazing once you get yourself out of that space where you're stuck in the standstill, not moving, stuck somewhere that you're not happy. Once you tap in and tune into that, whatever it is inside of you, it's usually like a feeling of what you could be like, what your life could be like, who you really are. There's something in you that you're like, I have got to let this out. I have got to let this grow. I need to let it breathe. I need to bring it into existence. And once you do, once you let that out, it will be like, you can breathe again. Like you'll just be like, <gasps> and no matter what happens, no matter what shit gets thrown at you along the way, cause there will be shit. You're not going to step into this new phase, whatever it is. Like I said, launching a side hustle, a business, leaving your job, leaving your partner. You're not going to step out and be like, this is amazing. You're going to step into it and be like, <gasps> Oh my God, I feel amazing. And then it's gonna be like, fuck. And it's going to come back and hit you right? And then you're going to need to step back into that. Okay, where am I? I need to find some bravery in my circumstance right now or whatever. You'll be hit. Maybe you'll be hit with a new upper limit. You step into the next zone of your life and you're like, cool, amazing. But now I want this and that's okay, right? We beat ourselves up. We say like, oh, I wanted this one thing and I did it and now I have it and I want something else. Like to go back, I wanted to have a, a kid. I was like, cool, I'm going to be a teacher, whatever. I, I will make it work. I will make myself like it. And I went and I had the child and a year later I was like, I really don't, like, I can't do this. And I remember being like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, what is wrong with you? You said that this is what you wanted. You said that you could do it. And now you're saying it's not good enough. And no, it's okay if it's not good enough. The reason things don't feel good enough is because they aren't right for you and you're supposed to step into something else. So when you have that feeling of um, dissatisfaction and you have this feeling of like, I really don't want to be where I am. I can't be doing this anymore, but I'm fucking terrified to do the next thing. You know, you're on the right path. Absolutely know you're on the right path. And I hope you can take this episode and think back. Like I said, remember at the beginning, I said, think of something, a time you had a really difficult decision to make or something you were really scared to do or think about it right now. What is it that you're scared to do? Is it a big thing like leaving your nine to five? launching a side hustle? Is it a, you know, a medium weight thing where it's like, well, I kind of have a side hustle and job and I really, it's not, it's not, you know, doing it for me and I want to pivot to this. Mm -hmm. Or is it just a really small thing where you're like, I need to be showing up on social media and I can't fucking do it. 
whatever it is, wherever you're stuck, the thing that you're afraid of and the thing that's holding you back is the thing that you need to push through, right? There's a reason that you're wanting this thing, feeling like it's what you need to do. And there's a reason that you're scared to do it. And so ask yourself, what do I have in my daily circumstances? What do I have in my life, in my environment? Who do I have around me in my relationships? Who do I have accessible to me through podcasts, social media? Who have I seen in movies? Like do that digging work, be relentless in investigating your experience, your life, your surroundings, the people, the things that you're in contact with, and look for bravery. Look for things to fill your bravery bucket so that you feel a little less scared, a little less unsupported, and you feel a lot more excited, right? Once you strip away and you get rid of the bri- the um, the fear and you start to bring in the proof and the expanders and the bravery and the, the gold threads that I was saying in your experience, suddenly the thing that you were afraid of, you're still afraid of it, But the concept of being there is like that much sweeter. And you're like, okay, now it's go time. Let's go. I would love to know what you're going for. I would love to know what are the things that are you're stuck on, where you're getting tripped up in fear. Um, Like I said, big things, small things, it doesn't matter. Your brain does not know the difference. All your brain knows is that you're trying to do something different than what you're doing right now. And it's like danger, like get out. So it doesn't matter how big or small you feel that this changes that you want. It's all important. And I would love to know what it is that you're what are you trying to push through right now? Um, you can find me on Instagram, right? I'm at Jennifer Hully. Shoot me a DM or, you know, even better, take a screenshot of this episode, post it and say, right now I'm working through this. Let's see if we can support each other and help be those expanders, trademarked by Lacey Phillips, must say that so I don't get in trouble. Be those expanders for people or be those uh, proof or those guides or even just help each other through these conversations to say, you know what, I bet in this uh, scenario or this situation, you could probably have this, or it could help you in this way. Maybe you could use it to network, find the ways that we can support each other through these moves. If you have made it this far in the video, that means you have some life change that you are working on, thinking about, contemplating. So I'd love to know in the comments what it is right now that you're facing that you feel like you need to push through, but you're kind of hesitant to cross that line. And if you loved this episode, I'd love for you to hit subscribe so that you can support this channel as it grows, but also you're not gonna miss any of these episodes and videos that I'm gonna be putting up here for you. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. I can taste you, 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 you. I can taste you.